Guys, in this video, we're going to be sharing the top five free solutions to help you reverse hair loss. If you're looking for some quick wins to help you to add into your hair care routine, then you need to watch this video. Guys, in the fifth tip, I'm gonna be sharing a crucial mistake that 90% of people do when they're trying to reverse hair loss, so do make sure to watch every single point. You'll be able to start applying most of this stuff by the end of the video. So without any delay, let's get straight into it. The top five free solutions for fighting hair loss. The first thing is fixing your nutrition. So guys, the rate of hair loss in modern societies is basically unprecedented in history. There has been no time or place in history where boldness was as common as it is in the West today. And the sad thing is, is things seem to be getting worse with every generation. Now, there are probably many contributing factors for this. And at this point, it's almost certain that unhealthy diets is one of them. When it comes to nutrition and hair loss, there are two sides to the equation. Firstly, you want to make sure that you're removing harmful foods from your diet. And while you're doing that, you want to be substituting them with the best possible foods. And when I say best possible foods, I mean nutrient packed foods that support your follicles and accelerate hair growth. So let's look at the first side of the equation. What foods should you be cutting out? Now, there's no big surprises in what I'm going to tell you here. In your heart of hearts, you probably already know most of this. In a nutshell, the foods that you want to be avoiding are A, acidic, B, inflammatory, and C, have a high glycemic index. These include fizzy drinks and other sugary beverages, processed foods, grains, sweet, candy, french fries, sugary cereals, and fast food. You also want to be avoiding breads and pasta. Basically, anything that's doughy needs to go. Dairy foods are a little bit of a gray area. While some people can handle them well, we generally recommend that you consume them only in moderation. And that also goes for meat and fish. Try and consume these in moderation, and if you can afford it, go for organic. Now, on the flip side, let's talk about the foods that you want to be consuming. These foods should be alkaline, anti-inflammatory, and have a low glycemic index. So that means green vegetables, roots, nuts and fruits, and these should make up the basis of your diet. Foods with a moderate to low caloric density, but they're packed with the micronutrients that your hair follicles need to thrive. Because, make no mistake, while the hair shaft is a relatively simple structure, the hair follicle from which it arises is a complex microorgan in its own right. And like all organs, without the necessary micronutrients to support its operation, it will break down. So you also want to focus on foods that contain vitamins and minerals whose deficiency can lead to hair loss. And I'm talking chiefly about biotin and iron. Foods rich in iron include lentils, spinach, oysters, as well as red meat and poultry. Biotin is found in eggs, nuts, seeds, broccoli, sweet potatoes, salmon, amongst others. We've also talked a lot about probiotics in past videos. So fermented foods like kombucha and kefir, as well as probiotic dairy products. And of course, you can always complement a healthy diet with supplements, particularly supplements that are designed to promote healthy hair growth. Now guys, I am excited to say that we've recently put together a hair nutrition plan. You get 21 delicious recipes designed specifically for faster, stronger hair growth. The meals are loaded with nutrients like biotin, zinc, and collagen, to make hair as thick and strong as possible. The best part is that these are all available completely for free. All you have to do is click the link in the description below and you'll have the recipes delivered instantly to your inbox. The second thing we're gonna be looking at is scalp massages. Now, if you are a regular viewer of this channel, then you will have heard us talk a lot about the link between scalp tension and hair loss, and it's for good reason. I want to show you something from a 2015 scientific paper. The paper looks at the relationship between scalp tension and androgenetic alopecia. On the left-hand side of this graphic, you can see the way that tension is distributed on the top of the scalp. The areas in light blue are those with the highest amounts of scalp tension. Those in the darker blue areas have less tension. So the question is, what causes this tension? Well, it's actually caused by the muscles on the front and back of the head. These are the so-called frontal and occipital muscles, respectively. As these muscles contract, they transmit their tension to certain layers of the scalp. 
Now, humans have always had to deal with scalp tension, but the extent of this tension in modern societies is unprecedented. Guys, we were just not designed to spend most of our days in office chairs hunched over computer screens. This unnatural posture can lead to major tension problems in the muscles in our back and our neck, and this tension eventually makes its way to the top of our head. You'll quickly realize why this is so damaging by looking at the image on the right. It shows the progression of pattern boldness, as captured by the Hamilton Norwood scale. The areas in green are the ones to go bold first, those in light blue are next, and finally those in dark blue. As you can see, there is a striking similarity with the distribution of scalp tension. Areas with the highest tension are the first ones to go bold, and those with the least tension are the last to go. Now, I'm not going to get into the mechanics of how tension in the scalp ultimately leads to hair follicle miniaturization and boldness. We have covered this in other videos, and I've linked to those in the description below. What's important for this video is the practical implications of this. As you might have guessed, Relieving this tension is the key to reversing hair loss. And guys, there is no simpler way to start doing this than through scalp massages. Massages that are simple to learn and that you can do from the comfort of your own home. For example, take this study that came out last year. It found that nearly 70% of men who were able to stop their hair loss or regrow hair through daily scalp massages. Massages that they learned to do themselves after some brief online instructions. Now, this will involve some time and effort. It's not a quick fix like popping a pill, but you have to consider that when doing scalp massage, you're treating hair loss at its root, and that's without side effects and without paying a single penny. If you want to learn how to do these very simple massages, then I'm going to link you to some videos that we've already made on scalp massage in the description. You'll find a series of free demonstration videos on a variety of scalp massages. These are all self-administered and targeted specifically for relieving scalp tension and reversing hair loss. Again, I've linked to those in the description below. And number three, guys, we've got stress reduction. So first things first, can stress contribute to male pattern hair loss? Well, it's a little bit of one of those gray areas. On the one hand, there isn't actually solid scientific data supporting the connection. But then on the other hand, ask anyone who's going bold if they see a connection between their stress levels and their degree of shedding. There's a very, very good chance that they will answer yes. But Here's the thing, aside from pattern hair loss, there are two other common forms of hair loss, telogen effluvium and alopecia areata, and stress is almost certainly linked to both of them, in the sense that it can either precipitate their onset or just exacerbate their symptoms. If you're suffering from pattern hair loss, I assure you that there is nothing to stop you from also developing one of the other conditions. They can, and often do develop side by side with pattern hair loss. The other things, stress is well known to affect our decision-making process, and high stress can negatively impact your ability to think clearly and act rationally, especially when it comes to dealing with hair loss. Now, I know that this is all often easier said than done, because we know from a wealth of research that the psychological effects of boldness can be devastating, both with regards to self-image and in terms of rising stress levels. So you're trying to reduce stress while at the same time going through a condition that can be very stressful on its own. So the first step in fighting this stress is reducing uncertainty and taking action. So we recommend that you do your research and come up with a multi-pronged approach to stopping and reversing your hair loss. And make sure that it's one that you can commit and most importantly stick to. So then rather than just worrying about your hair loss, you're busy treating and reversing it. Now, on a day-to-day -day basis, if you are feeling stressed, what you can do is just take a break. Stop whatever it is that you're doing and focus on your breathing for a few minutes. This can be enough to ground you into the present moment and stop your mind from wandering. Another practical step is daily exercise, which can be something as simple as taking a walk in the outdoors. On the Hair Guard website, we also have an entire section dedicated to stress reduction. Guys, I'm going to link you to the stress modules in the Hair Guard Pro area in the description below. The fourth thing that you want to be doing is to stop showering with hard water. So guys, hard versus soft water refers to the concentration of minerals in it, primarily calcium and magnesium. Water with high concentrations of minerals is considered hard, whereas soft water has fewer minerals or sometimes none at all. Now, when water falls from the sky as rainwater, it's naturally soft. But as it travels through the ground and enters the public water system, it accumulates various minerals and it can start to become harder. 
Water is classed as soft when it has between 0 to 3.5 grains per gallon, or GPG. Moderate water ranges from 3.5 to 7 GPG, and hard water is higher than 7 GPG. Water with a concentration higher than 10.5 is considered very hard. If you're watching this video in the US or the UK, chances are that your water coming out of your tap is hard. In the US, around 85% of the supply is hard, and to be sure, you can call your water company to ask them. Alternatively, you can check out one of the water hardness maps online. Now, it is no secret that hard water can be a burden on your plumbing and your appliances. The minerals in the water cause the scale buildup and reduce life expectancy of things like your washing machine, your dishwasher, and your pipes. But think about it. If the hard water can damage your appliances, what is it actually doing to your hair? Will, the founder of HairGuard, attributes a large part of his success in reversing his hair loss to the realization of the damage that hard water was doing to his hair. Will comes from an area of the UK with extremely hard water, and each time that he showered, he'd be struck by how itchy and dry his scalp felt as well as how brittle his hair was. It was only when Will travelled to other countries with soft water that he could feel the difference to his hair. You see, just like they build up in your appliances, the minerals in hard water also build up on your hair shaft and scalp. They get stuck in the exterior part of the hair shaft, the cuticles, which leads to their feeling brittle and looking dull. And things can get much worse when you combine hard water with a poor quality shampoo, as this can lead to scum residue in the scalp. If you're watching this from a part of the world with hard water, you basically have two options. The simplest one is to install a water filter in your shower. These are relatively simple and affordable devices that you can just attach to the head of your shower. The cost is typically in the range of $10 to $50, depending on the quality. A more powerful but far more expensive alternative is getting a dedicated machine called a water softener. A professionally installed water softener can run up to several thousand dollars, but it will treat your home's entire water supply. Guys, the fifth thing is getting rid of your supermarket shampoo. Now, if you walk down the shampoo aisle in a supermarket, you can't fail to be impressed by the wide variety of shampoos on offer. Just think about it for a second. In large supermarkets, there is an entire aisle devoted just to shampoos and other hair products. One shampoo promises to fight dandruff, another one is for brittle hair, then the shampoo for dye hair, another one for dry hair, a conditioner for oily hair, another one to fight frizz, one for curly, one for straight. You get the whole point. Now, all this in a million different fragrances and a million different colors. Yet, hair loss has never been as widespread as it is today. Clearly, something doesn't add up. So the way that these shampoos and conditioners work is that they use a base set of chemicals, which are more or less the same. And then, depending on the specific application that they are supposed to work for, like dried hair or whatever, they include certain special ingredients. I'll set aside the issue of whether these shampoos really can work as advertised. Now, more importantly, let's discuss the ingredients that are in them. The two classes of chemicals that I want to talk to you about are sulfates and parabens. Now, sulfates, including sodium lauryl sulfate, are added into the shampoo as foaming agents. So, they give that nice rich lather that looks and feels so cool. But what your shampoo manufacturer won't tell you is that sulfates are basically detergents, and you can find them in cleaning products like laundry detergents, spray cleaners, and also dishwasher detergents. Now, if you're already struggling with hair loss, the logical question is, do I want to be aggravating things by subjecting my follicles to such a harsh chemical? The other chemicals that your shampoo maker won't talk about are parabens. These are used as preservatives. So they act to extend the shelf life of your shampoo in the process reducing the cost. These do enter your body when they're in your shampoo, and they have also been shown to have estrogenic activity, albeit weak meaning that they mimic the female hormone and have the potential to disrupt your endocrine system. Some researchers suggest that in men, they might also negatively affect fertility. Now, this is a video about free solutions for hair loss, in the sense of solutions that won't cost you a penny over what you're now paying. So the question is, if you're going to be paying for a shampoo, why not ditch your mass-produced, chemical-laden supermarket shampoo for something more natural. Now, these natural shampoos might not smell as nice, nor have the same fancy packaging or give the same rich lather. But one that uses all natural ingredients will work for your hair follicles instead of against them. And that will actually help you 
grow more hair. So guys, I've linked to the Hair Guard Caffeine Shampoo in the description below. Again, you're not gonna get the fancy packaging, the insane foam, but I can tell you that we've spared no cost in creating a shampoo with nothing but the best all natural ingredients. So instead of junk like sulfate and parabens, you get ingredients that have been shown in peer-reviewed scientific research to stimulate hair growth when applied topically. One of the key ingredients is caffeine, which at this point is backed by a substantial body of research as a hair growth agent. Aside from caffeine, our shampoos also contain other topical hair growth stimulants like oleuropine, taurine, and coconut oil. Now it does come with a 180 day money back guarantee. So if there's any reason that you're not happy with your purchase, just let us know and we'll issue with a refund in full. I've linked that to you in the description below. And guys, the last point is not to shampoo every single day. You want to shampoo two, three times at a maximum each week. And guys, if you want to learn more about the best practices to use in the shower, or if you want to learn more about Will's eight steps to use to reverse his hair loss, then make sure to click the video on the screen now.